Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're taking a look at the Wisconsin yet again. Did a lot on this ship last week, and I've intentionally not been uploading about this ship this week because I wanted to give it more of a chance. As you probably know, a lot of other people have been playing this ship really enjoy it. So I figured I must be doing something wrong. People like Maltese Knight have been having a great time in this ship. So I've been trying to perform a little better in this thing, trying to play it a lot more, see the strengths and get a little bit better feel for the dispersion. That was the main complaint I had about this ship, of course. And I think I was just getting straight up unlucky uh, last week, unlucky and perhaps just not playing it correctly as well. I was averaging 105,000 damage in this ship, <laughs> which is not great for me. Uh, and one of the main reasons I wasn't having a great time was I felt like the ship wasn't hitting shots like that very consistently. And now that I've played it a lot this week, I've seen that this ship is actually quite consistent. The combat instructions are very powerful and I've been having a pretty good time in this ship. It's still never going to be the perfectly consistent, accurate ship because it's a battleship and that wouldn't be balanced if a battleship was perfectly accurate all the time. But I have been getting more consistently good salvos like I would expect out of Battle Cruiser Dispersion 2.0 Sigma. I'm harping on that a lot in these Wisconsin videos because that is the differentiating factor here. What makes Wisconsin unique is its dispersion and these combat instructions. It needs to have strong gimmicks like that to make up for the differences that Montana has as the counterpart to tier 10. More guns and better tankiness, more HP. Montana is a pretty strong, if a little bit vanilla, tier 10 battleship. So Wisconsin needs to use these gimmicks and be similarly good to Montana. Even if it's a little bit less tanky, I think the dispersion should be just a little bit better. And I've been noticing that as we just absolutely destroy this enemy Montana and the Riga before. These are the salvos that I've been looking for, and I've been getting many, many more of them. So. I was wrong about Wisconsin, I guess. Uh, I'm not actively trying to troll you guys or lean into that meme of whatever. I'm, you know, <laughs> not liking a ship and then all of a sudden I like it a week later. I'm trying not to. Um, straight up, I did not have a great time in this ship. I'm always going to try and give my honest take on a ship and my experience playing this game as I think that's the most important thing I can offer as a creator. It's also the reason that you guys should be watching a lot of different content creators, CCs or otherwise, to get a more holistic look at whatever new ship or content is coming into this game. Assuming that content creators are going to give you their honest take, their honest experience with the ship or the new content in the game, that is going to give you a nice wide perspective on anything new coming into the game allowing you to make an informed decision on whether you want to spend money or time grinding some of this stuff out. And for me, I did not have a good time with it earlier on, but I've been getting more games like this one, where we've been dev striking ships, we're getting consistent citadels when things are broadside, and I've been enjoying my time with the Wisconsin, honestly. I still think I prefer Montana, but it's no longer a matter of, I think Montana is just the overall better ship. I think that's more down to my nostalgia for playing Montana so much in competitive and uh, just enjoying that ship for for that reason. It's not as much of a, I think it's a better ship overall. They're very, very comparable, very good ships that each offer different strengths. Wisconsin being a little more pinpoint accurate, but less volume of fire. The concealment on this ship certainly helps a ton. And these combat instructions, man, having a reload booster to punish ships that go broadside to you is very, very handy. And as you get into the lower health, you can start to transition that combat instructions over to relying on it more for your consumable reload. Having them both is extremely powerful. That uh, consumable reload is just the whole gimmick of the San Martin and the Pan American cruiser line. So to have that here and have it also double as a reload booster is kind of nuts. It really is. Um, this ship is quite, quite good. So for any of you grinding it out and uh, were a little bit worried about it or um, took my opinion as uh, this ship is bad, well, I was wrong. Um, to lean into that meme, I was wrong again. <laughs> 
Um, but I'm glad I was wrong. I wanted to perform well in this ship. I want this ship to be good because it is such an interesting, unique ship. It also is a historical ship, a ship that was actually built and used, which is also very, very cool. I'm not as much of a history buff, but I can't lie, that does add some significance to this thing and makes it a little bit more interesting than some of the paper designs we get. Shikishima going broadside, and these are the salvos where I would like to get a citadel. Um, not necessarily going to, but look at that dispersion. Going back, I think I was just not getting the best dispersion. I maybe was misaiming, mispositioning, but I haven't really changed up my playstyle too much, I don't think. I've been really trying to play aggressive enough to find broadsides at medium to close range, since these are just 406s. Um, I've been talking about this ship like you've watched all the other videos, but perhaps you've just stumbled upon this video. Uh, Wisconsin is an Iowa up tier, basically. So you get 406s, very similar to what you'd get at tier 9. So you're not actually getting much more firepower. You're reliant on the improved dispersion that these shells will have to get you that extra bit of damage. But at range, at these higher tiers, battleships, cruisers, they all get more armor, especially battleships, where you're not going to be citadeling them outside 15, 17 kilometers nearly as much as you might at tier 9, since the armor values are just higher, so you don't even have the pen necessarily. So that's why I want to be a little bit closer. The concealment also kind of allows for that, it's around 12.7. Very, very good to have that concealment. This ship is also quite quick, no speed boost or anything like that, but the Iowa class is a very fast battleship. And if we take something like a Brisk, which I have off and on, uh, this ship can quickly maneuver around the map, it's very, very nice. I haven't been enjoying kiting in this ship, so I'm often trying to play bow in. It feels a little odd to play like that, but the concealment does allow us to do that just because the number two turret firing angles are 40 degrees when looking over the shoulder kiting. Not very good. Uh, Petro taking 17,000 damage there, kind of insane. That's that pinpoint accurate dispersion allowing us to target some of the overmatch points on his ship. And again, another very accurate salvo to kill him, right? The consistency is there. I've been seeing it much more recently than I did in that first week. Perhaps that means I need to play these ships much more before giving um, a first impressions or a review. Um, but first impressions are first impressions, right? Um, I kind of like that. It's going in blind to a ship and just seeing how it goes off the bat. And then as I play the ship more, I can get a more nuanced take that is a little more representative of the ship, but 310,000 damage Kraken, that's a very good game. Very, very, very good game. 10 Citadels in this one, even got a Dev Strike. These are the kind of matches, the highlight matches that I'm looking for out of a ship like this. I did get one or two last week, um, certainly, but uh, the vast majority of them were pulling that average way, way down. I was. Outside of those one or two good games I was able to highlight, I was just kind of miserable with this thing. And uh, maybe I didn't give it enough time, but uh, certainly was trying it out a ton this week because I did want to give it a fair shake. I didn't want to just write it off and uh, say it's bad without playing it some more. Um, a ship can be good and then I won't play it as much, you know, because a ship being pretty good is uh, not all that controversial, I don't think, but saying this one was bad was a little bit more controversial, I think, and probably because it is a good ship. I was just getting a little bit unfortunate. Now, moving on to our next game. I'm going to try and stop repeating myself. I've said that so many times already. Sorry. Next game here, I want to show you off some of the tankiness as well as the ability to use this F key, these combat instructions, to gain your consumables back rather quickly. That also includes your defensive fire and your spotter plane. So it allows you to use some of this utility very aggressively and get it back very, very quickly. So I put myself into a pretty bad position objectively here. Stuck bow in, carriers coming to strike us all the time. Not going that well. But I can always get back to these heals rather quickly, my damage control as well, and this defensive fire. So this enemy Malta is gonna be after us understandably so because we are bow in and we're gonna actually live quite a while so even though we lack some hp we don't have the best hull even though the citadel is below water which is nice um having monty hull is just so much better than iowa hull down to that superstructure the superstructure is so much bigger on the ship 
Um, notice we got our defensive fire back rather quickly and we're able to use that to take out a lot of planes. Now, he still almost kills us, um, but we're alive, just barely. <laughs> and I do manage to live. Keep in mind this is arms race, so some of these games are going to be using the arms race buffs to help us stay alive, do more damage. The ship can look a little bit better. We need to remember that enemy ships also get some buffs in this one too, so maybe it balances out. Defensive fire again on uh, these multi planes, just trying to keep them away from us. Basically trying to live as long as we can here. It's not looking so good for our teammates, but uh, we are going to try and do our best as this game comes to an end. Maybe should be swapping to the high explosive here, um, even though this ship does have decent AP, um, you're going to struggle against angled ships. So. Going to the high explosive is probably the best way to deal with angled ships. Some of the worst games I've had are the matches where I'm stuck at medium to long ranges and I'm stuck on a flank where the enemy team is all able to just angle to me without worrying about showing broadside to someone else. Or you're fighting against a lot of torp boats, a lot of smoked up ships. Those are the games where things often didn't go very well for me. <laughs> this ship can struggle, much like a Slava actually. If you've ever played a Slava, which I know that is a difficult ship to get. Um, it feels a little bit similar in that regard, where the ship just needs to find broadsides to perform. Otherwise, it is going to struggle to have much battle impact. Managed to take out the Shikishima there, which is very nice. And there's an enemy Wisconsin right around the corner. We don't actually take a Citadel there. Um, I maybe overhyped the below water Citadel too much just because in my uh, time playing Illinois, which is a very similar ship to this one as far as the Citadel location. Didn't get citadel all that much, but then I was playing Wisconsin, I got citadel much more often. And I think maybe that's just down to the positions I was taking in Wisconsin being a little bit different. And uh, the ship can be citadel It seems to be outside of that 15 kilometers range outside of that. Battleships will be able to citadel you. Not reliably, but they can just because they overmatch the citadel roof and uh, the plunging fire will actually get there. But at closer ranges, notice we're just not taking any citadels from this Wisconsin. And sure, we're gonna go down here, but we had a very good last stand, um, getting up to over 200,000 damage in this one. Confederates, as you can tell, are pretty important for this ship as well. <laughs> the extra reload there is very, very nice. Um, and hey, we managed to live much longer than I thought we would have whether that's just the arms race buffs or if that is some of these combat instructions, combination of both. Very nice to see. Uh, the last little game here I've got for you guys, at least for today, I've got plenty of other good games. So if you wanna see more Wisconsin, some good ones, um, let me know. We can take a look at those maybe next week. But uh, two brothers, uh, gotta go middle, right? Gotta go middle. It's a little bit scary going middle when um, there's enemy DDs just like waiting for you to poke out. Um, this Worcester makes a bit of a mistake staying too broadside to us, and we absolutely smash him. The consistency is there. I'm, I'm seeing the consistency. It's actually feeling very, very reliable to me now, the Wisconsin. So I'm very, very happy that that is the case at this point. Now this Lucian, instead of just YOLOing around the corner to get a bunch of torpedoes off on us, uh, is going to just try and poke away at us with his main guns. He pokes out a little too far. We get that big juicy HE hit into him. I tend to find HE does it best against destroyers when you can guarantee hits on the hull. Anytime you're hitting the superstructure or more importantly modules, you're not going to do very much damage at all with the high explosive into DDs. So when they're angled at range, basically, um, you, you can hit the torp tubes, you can hit the guns, anything like that, and suddenly your HE just really doesn't do much damage at all. So then the armor piercing, getting you those overpens, can do a little better. Um, but swapping to the HE is very important to know, especially at these closer ranges can be very good. Our Petro pokes out a little too far and uh, does get taken out, so I have to back off. The key here, especially in a match like this one where the enemy team does have quite a few ships that can focus on the middle, um, this choke point here, we don't want to be the main point of attack. We want to be the distraction is kind of the idea with this two brothers thing, at least in this match. Sometimes you do just need to full send it, but in a match like this one, it was important that we're just a distraction. We're not passively not participating, but we're also not poking out so that, uh, well, we can get cross-fired and die a little bit easy. Kitakami spotted. That ship is very stealthy, so we want to just shoot at him when he's spotted. 
and take him out because that's a lot of torpedoes for us to deal with. That gives the Lucian an opportunity to get some torpedoes off on us without us having a shot ready, unfortunately. And Lucian has deep waters and can't single fire. So that means the submarine is actually back here. <laughs> We're in trouble. The ship does not get improved torpedo protection. So our torp protection is like 25% um, only. Yeah, another weakness of the Iowa hull, unfortunately. So we take a ton of damage from torpedoes. Still alive though, very nice to see. I'm gonna try and blind drop some uh, of these ASWs. Potentially the Gato is right in front of us here. In order to get that angle to torp us, he'd have to be around there. And we do manage to get him. Um, I do swap. I have the HE loaded here, and we have an angled DD. At this range, though, we should be able to get some hits on his hull and do some good damage. Unfortunately, we only get two hits and only 1,700 damage. That's a good example of two HE hits dealing 1,700 damage, where two AP hits, well, that's doing 10% of our alpha, which is 13,500. So we would have got well over 2,000, right? 2,600, 2,700 damage is what the AP would have done to him with two hits there, where the HE only did 1,700. So a full thousand damage missed out on because I shot HE at him instead of the AP. Maybe we got unlucky with this version too, but interesting to note there that it's not always just load HE for the DD. It is dependent on what angle they're taking and what range they're at. Um, I do think I got a bit unlucky there, but still. Maybe I should have been more patient for him to turn a little more broadside. That probably would have been the best way to go about things. Now, the uh, Han over there, kind of skipping forward, does die very quickly to our team. Um, I didn't do very good uh, damage against him, but we do absolutely crush that Moskva while he's angled at range. That is not very likely from this ship, uh, certainly. 406s should be bouncing much more off of Moskva, and yet another Confederate. I found myself getting a lot of those. Um, so running Halsey on this thing is gonna be really good. Now pushing out, incomparable, broadside, flat broadside, close range. And we absolutely do smash him. Dev strike. He nearly gets us back. Uh, but I've been having more consistently good games in this ship. And I don't really think I'm playing it all that different, to be honest with you. Um, maybe, maybe I'm playing a little more careful, a little more passive, not dying as early, but uh, still, I, I don't think I've changed up all that much. I think I'm just getting a little bit luckier or more likely I'm getting enough games that uh, the RNG is pulling closer to the average where I was maybe getting a little bit unlucky to start with. Even there, just shells finding citadels. Very, very nice to see against that Moskva. Uh, but those are the games that I have for you today. I can show you the build. I have, I have actually been messing around with a bunch of different builds as well. Kind of finding out if I should take heavy AP, things like that. I think, honestly, a standard build, just basic, can work out very well for this ship. You don't have to go crazy with it, but especially because it has so many gimmicks already, combat instructions-wise, you might not need to go as crazy on the commander. Um, but we do get a win here. Very nice to see. Over 200k again. Dev strikes, confederates. Very good stuff. Um, let's go look at it in port. So I still think the standard build is probably just best, but just to show you what I have been messing around with, uh, I'm trying builds like this. We're taking a few more of these lower tier skills, super heavy AP, giving us a little bit of extra damage output from our main guns. 14.5 there is kind of nice on those guns. Adrenaline rush, brisk things to maneuver around, reload. I'm taking my extra healing here on improved repair party readiness since I am getting most of my games where I need that fifth heal up over 2 million potential damage. Uh, so saving a point there, maybe getting something like preventive maintenance, since uh, these turrets can die rather quickly. Um, they're not the best armored, I suppose. That uh, number two turret has become a bit of a meme. Um, <laughs> speaking of Malta again, he's played this ship a ton, and <laughs> it's his number two turret that dies every game, basically. It's uh, kind of funny, because uh, they're also trying to fix the number two turret IRL as well, uh, so maybe a bit of uh, reality creeping into the game. Maybe they made the number two turret a little weaker. <laughs> probably not, but uh, just funny to uh, think about. Uh, as for a standard build, probably just gun feeder, grease the gears, um, adrenaline rush, and then taking emergency repair, concealment, and fire prevention. 
And then maybe going brisk and preventive maintenance, done that one before. Maybe you want to go basic survivability. Maybe a fifth heal is, uh, or sixth heal could be worthwhile on this ship as well. It does take a lot of damage to the superstructure, which a lot of that can be healed back. So maybe six heals is a good idea as well. Armor wise, you can see just how low that Citadel is underwater. It is so far down there, man. Like the plunging fire to hit that, it's, it's pretty far away. Uh, but it can be overmatched, and uh, realistically, it is at those longer ranges where the Citadel is vulnerable. Otherwise, it's just going to be full pens into your broadside is what you're going to take, more than likely. Now, the major change here to the upgrades is I'm not running range mod. Um, so the main reason is because I wasn't using my spotter plane that much when I was running range mod. And because of that, I found myself wondering if the extra turret traverse would allow me to get these guns on target a little bit quicker when I'm trying to play more centrally um, the ability to swap between different flanks whoever's giving me the most broadside that kind of thing was nice um, getting down to almost 30 second turret traverse is really good and I always have the spotter plane to give me those longer range shots and sure it doesn't come back that quickly I mean 95 seconds isn't too bad for it to come back but the main thing is you have those combat instructions right that every once in a while will just give you your spotter back again, right? That's kind of the idea here is I wasn't using my spotter plane that much. And I thought that the consumables, the combat instructions would allow me to get that spotter plane back sooner. And I can then take the turret traverse here. That's kind of the idea. And I've been enjoying that a little bit more. This is kind of the build that I have been running. Um, 12.9 detect. I think I said 12.7 earlier in the video. That is wrong. 12.9. But that's still very, very good. Nice and quick. The AA is just okay. Uh, you really need defensive fire for it to do anything. And even then, it's not stopping a strike. It's hopefully going to stop a follow-up strike. It's never going to stop that first one. It's kind of just how things go in the uh, in the game right now. But that's going to do it for Wisconsin this week. Maybe we'll take some more looks at it um, over the next couple of weeks. If I have some more just absolutely really good games, let me know what you, if you want to see some of those. Um, but thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and have a great rest of your day.